going to show you how to find the equation of a circle when you're given three points that lie on the circumference. So in our example, it says a circle passes through the points P at minus 1, 4, Q at 1, 6, and R at 5, 4. Find the equation of the circle. So I think it's helpful if you can just draw a rough sketch just to visualize better what's happening in the question. So here's the circle with the three points P, Q, and R. Now, you can see I've just joined the points up with straight lines here. So there's a chord from P to Q and also Q to R. And there are also two dashed lines. Those dashed lines are the perpendicular bisectors of the chords P, Q, and Q, R. Now, whenever perpendicular bisectors intersect here on a circle, they pass through the center of the circle, okay? And to write down the equation of a circle, we need to know the coordinates of the center of the circle and also the radius, okay? So I'm going to try and work out the equations of the perpendicular bisectors, use simultaneous equations to work out the values of x and y, so the coordinates of the center of the circle, and then from, from there I can work out the distance from the center to any of those three points, which will also give me the radius, okay? So let's have a go. So I'm going to start by working out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line PQ. So to do that, I'm going to begin by working out the gradient of the line PQ. So, gradient of PQ. So, to work out the gradient, I'm going to use a method called rise over run. So, I'm just going to find the difference between the y values, the rise, and divide by the difference in the x values, the run. Okay? So, let's look at the y values first of P and Q. So, 4 and 6. So, I'm going to subtract those. And it doesn't matter which way you subtract, you'll get the same gradient either way. So I'm going to start with Q and subtract P. So 6, take away 4. And then divide by the difference in the X values. So 1, take away negative 1. Watch out for the double minus. And then if we work that out, 6 take away 4 is 2. 1 take away negative 1 is the same as 1 plus 1, which is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that is the gradient of the chord PQ, okay? So from there, we can work out the gradient of the perpendicular bisector of PQ. Okay, so I'll just put gradient of PB, so perpendicular bisector. If the gradient of the line PQ is 1, the gradient of the perpendicular bisector should be negative 1. Remember, when two lines are perpendicular to each other, when you take their gradients and multiply them together, it should always equal negative 1, okay? So you can just do negative 1 divided by this number and it will give you the other gradient, okay? So there's the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. Okay, but next, to work out the equation, we also need to have the coordinates of at least one point that lie along that line. And at the moment, we don't know any points along the dashed line. So we do know this is the perpendicular bisector. It bisects the line PQ, which means it cuts the line PQ exactly in, in half. And so this point of intersection is what we call the midpoint. Okay, so we can work out the midpoint of the line PQ and it will give us a point on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so next we're going to work out the midpoint of the line PB. PQ, sorry. I think confuse you. All right, so to work out the midpoint of a line, you take the two end x values, add them together, and divide by 2. Then you take the two end y values together, add them, and divide by 2. So the x values of P and Q are negative 1 and 1. So negative 1 plus 1 divided by 2. And remember, you're always dividing by 2 because you're finding the midpoint. It's in the middle of the line, okay? So you're always dividing by 2. The y values here are 4 and 6, so if we add those together and divide by 2, that will give us the y value of the midpoint. Next, if we calculate that, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 divided by 2 is just still 0, and 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that is the midpoint of the line PQ. So now we have the gradient of the perpendicular bisector and a point that lies along the line, we can work out the equation. So it's a straight line 
So it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c. I can substitute m, the gradient for negative 1, because the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is 1, and then I can substitute in the two values x and y from here. So I'm going to change my y value to 5, my x value to 0, and then we can work out the value of c, the y-intercept of this line, okay? So negative 1 multiplied by 0 is 0, so 5 is equal to c. So the y-intercept of the perpendicular bisector is 5. So if I just summarise, the equation of the perpendicular bisector should be y equals negative 1x, or negative x, it's the same thing, plus 5. Okay, so there's the equation of our first perpendicular bisector. So next we have to do all of that again for the other perpendicular bisector. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line here to separate my working. So, next, we have to work out the gradient of the line QR. Okay, so remember, to work out the gradient, you have to use that method rise over run, so work out the difference between the Y values and divide by the difference between the X values. So this time, the Y values are 6 and 4. Again, okay, so it's the same. So 6 take away 4. And then the x values are different this time, so 1 take away 5. Okay, if I work that out, 6 take away 4 is 2, 1 take away 5 is negative 4, so that simplifies to negative a half. Okay, so that's the gradient of the line QR. So then the gradient of the perpendicular bisector of QR should be positive 2. Remember, those two gradients have to multiply together to give negative 1. So if you take negative 1 and divide by negative a half, you should get 2, okay? Or the easiest, easier way to remember it is the gradient will always change. So if this gradient is negative, then the new gradient will be positive and vice versa. And then you take the reciprocal. So the fraction would switch upside down and 2 over 1 is the same as 2, okay? If you're not sure about anything I've said so far, like working out the gradient of a line or working out gradients of, of perpendicular bisectors, finding the midpoint. I have lessons on all of those, so please do have a look at my other lessons in case any of that was a bit too tricky. Okay, so now we have the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. We have to work out the midpoint of the line QR, as that will give us a set of coordinates of a point that lie along the line, and then we can work out the equation. Okay, so I'm going to work out the midpoint of the line QR. Okay, so remember when you're finding the midpoint, you add the two x values together, so 1 plus 5, then you divide by 2, then you add the y values together, so 6 plus 4, and again you divide by 2. So if we calculate that, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, so now we can work out the equation of the second perpendicular bisector. So remember, it's in this form, y equals mx plus c. We know the x and y values here from the midpoint, so we can substitute those into the equation. So instead of y, I have 5, and instead of x, I have 3, and the gradient m we worked out down here, it was positive 2. Okay, so we're just substituting in everything we know so that now we can work out C, the y-intercept of that equation. So 2 times 3 is 6, so 5 is equal to 6 plus C. Then if I subtract 6 on both sides, I find that C, the y-intercept, is negative 1. So if I bring that all together, I work out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. It's y equals 2x, because the gradient is 2, and then minus 1, because the y-intercept is minus 1. Okay, so there's the second equation. Now we're going to use those two equations, solve the simultaneous equations to work out the values of x and y, which are the centre coordinates for this circle. Okay. 
So I've just rewritten the equations that we just worked out. The perpendicular bisector of PQ here and below the perpendicular bisector of QR. So we're going to solve the simultaneous equations to work out the point of intersection of those two straight lines. And remember, the point of intersection of the two perpendicular bisectors is the center of the circle, okay? We need to work out the coordinates to the center to be able to work out the equation of the circle. So both of these equations are rearranged to have y as the subject. And since y is equal to y, we know that negative x plus 5 has to equal 2x, take away 1. So I'm going to write that down to form an equation that I can solve to first find the value of x. Okay, so I'm going to move my x terms over to the right hand side of this equation, my non x terms over to the left. And remember, whenever a term moves across the equal sign, it's going to change sign. So this negative x is going to change to a positive x, and this negative 1 is going to change to a positive 1. So I have 5 plus 1 equals 2x plus x. And if I simplify that, 5 plus 1 is 6, 2x plus x is 3x, and then I can solve to find x by dividing by 3 on both sides. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So there is the x coordinate to the centre of the circle, okay? So now we have to substitute that value of x, 2, into either of these equations. It doesn't matter which one you use, so let's say we use the top one. So all I'm going to do is substitute x for 2, okay? So instead of y equals negative x, I've got y equals negative 2 plus 5. And if we work that out, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Okay, so that is the y coordinate of the center of the circle. Okay, so the center of the circle lies at 2, 3. So next we have to work out the radius of the circle. And remember, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the circumference. So we can either work out uh, the, the distance from C, the center, to either P, Q, or R. So I'm going to work out the distance from C to R. And I've just drawn an enlarged uh, sketch over here, just so you can see better what we're trying to do. So the distance from C to R is here, okay? And I've just drawn in a, here a right angle triangle, so that you can see that we're using Pythagoras' theorem to work out the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Now, we know the coordinates of the centre and we know the coordinates of R. So we can work out the base length and the height of that triangle and then work out the hypotenuse. So the base length is just the difference between the x values. So the difference between 2 and 5 is 3. And the height of the triangle is the difference between the y values of C and R. So the difference between 3 and 4 is 1. Okay, so now to work out the length of the hypotenuse, you just square root the base squared, so 3 squared, add the height squared, so 1 squared. And 3 squared is 9, 1 squared is 1, so the radius is the square root of 10. So finally, we can write down the equation of the circle, and I'm going to write down the equation in completed square form, so looking like this, okay? So when it's in this form, what you have to do is take the x-coordinate of the centre of the circle and substitute it in here in place of a. Then you take the y-coordinate of the centre of the circle and substitute it in here in place of b. And remember, it's equal to the radius squared. Okay, So we have to remember to square the radius when we write down the equation. So our equation is going to look like this. x minus 2, Okay, because a is 2 all squared, plus y take away 3, because our b value is 3, all squared, and this is equal to the radius squared. Now the radius is equal to root 10, so if we square the radius, i.e. square root 10, it's like multiplying root 10 by itself. So root 10 multiplied by root 10 is just 10. Okay, so r squared is 10, and so this is equal to 10. Okay, so that is the equation of our circle.